The Changeling is bringing a whole new playstyle to the Siege faction, with settlements being replaced by cults and conquest being replaced by schemes. But how exactly do you play this latest addition to the chaotic roster? Well, let's dive in and find out. Alongside the usual changing of the ways, the Changeling also has access to a series of mechanics unique to his faction. First up, we have cults. Instead of the traditional settlement occupation system most factions make use of, the Changeling instead uses hidden cults not unlike those that all branches of Chaos can make use of. These are created post-battle with a settlement, can be spread by expansion-based buildings within existing cults, and can instantly be created by using tricks to cultists. These are hidden settlements of sorts, built underneath existing settlements with 4 building slots and a discoverability rating, similar to your regular cult, or an undercity from the Skaven. The more buildings you build which add discoverability, the more likely it is that the settlement owner discovers your cult and destroys it, taking all of your hard work with it. Luckily some buildings reduce discoverability so you can build smart to keep yourself hidden. Buildings inside of these cults are separated into 4 areas. Basic and advanced military are pretty simple. Build these to unlock recruitment in the local region, and yet yeah, you can recruit in enemy territory if you have a cult with military buildings there, I mean how else would you do it? You can also replenish in any territory so building and maintaining an army really couldn't be any easier. Symbiotic and parasitic buildings however are a little bit different. With the exception of the halls of despoiling, every building in one is mutually exclusive with the corresponding building in the other. All this means is you can't build say the Agent's Hollow and the Limb Breaker's Lair in the same cult. One great thing about this is as you get into your game and you decide that you want to swap from one building type to another, you can easily do this without losing progress and can even switch between two when upgrading at no extra cost. But back to the building types. Symbiotic works with the host settlements, with options to increase control, income and even diplomatic relations with the owner. Of course all these options also benefit you, but you're still helping the host, which could make for a really fun corp campaign. Parasitic is the opposite, corrupting the region and doing basically everything possible to make the host settlement as unstable as possible. Neither side is more powerful than the other, so it really comes down to what you need and what the settlement and its owner can offer you. For example, a low level settlement without much income and a minor faction owner doesn't really pose much of a use to you, so you might as well get that flat income from Raider's Bounty, rather than enhancing and leeching the settlements with disguised trade. But if it's a major faction you want to be friends with, then the Court of Whispers makes far more sense than the Underground Temple. Symbiotic also has a lot more options for reducing discoverability, so like most things in life the best build ends up being a combination of all kinds of buildings. There are also options here for summoning armies which have 100 discoverability, so hiding these for the full duration will be a must to ensure they can pull off their scheme without a hitch. And if you really want to make sure a settlement is in trouble, you could build the Halls of Despoiling, followed by the Ravaging Host, to essentially sack the settlement without a battle for a nice hit of income based on the stats of the target settlements. All cult buildings require gold to be built alongside cult supplies. These are created in the Agent's Hollow and Limbreaker's Lair chains in varying amounts, so having a few of these to get started is the way to go for quick expansion. Cults also survive ownership changes of the host settlements, as well as raising. Yes, you heard me right, if the host settlement is burned to the ground, your cult remains. I'm not complaining, but it makes it quite literally impossible to lose this campaign unless you just build 100 discoverability items in every single cult you have. Fun overbalance is fine by me, but it is worth mentioning. A final great effect of cults is the fact that your armies will be hidden in any regions with cults existing in them, meaning enemies will have a real task on their hands trying to track you down once you get any sort of base camp on the go. Next up we have schemes. These are the second major component of the Changeling's toolkits, and I really won't give you direction in game. Instead of conquest, you'll be working towards various specific objectives in different areas of the map known as theatres. Both the Realms of Chaos and the Immortal Empires have been split into bite sized chunks and each of these will have 5 or 6 minor schemes and 1 grand scheme. Minor schemes are smaller missions where you'll need to win a certain amount of battles, maybe against a specific faction, or corrupt a specific region, and even build up cults in key locations. When completed, these will grant you all manner of rewards, such as permanent faction buffs, items, unique regiments of renown, tricks to rifts and cultists, vision of the entire region, and even the form of other legendary characters for changeling to use in battle, which I'll come back to shortly. And yes, you heard me right, I said rifts. No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Relax, it's not like the usual rifts. You decide where to place these from the research tree, and some are placed through schemes, and you can use them to teleport around the map at the cost of grimoires. No Chaos Realm required, just easy getting around without spending hundreds of turns on forced march. Tricks to Cultists are unique heroes which can be used on a settlement to instantly form an advanced cult with several buildings in, and are also spawned via research in any of the theatres in the game. 
Grand schemes are unlocked upon completing a number of minor schemes, which varies depending on the region. To be completed, you must beat a challenging quest battle, and upon completion, you'll unlock similar rewards to minor schemes, though normally more powerful and numerous, alongside creating chaos in the region with civil wars, plagues, and more, depending on the region. This all builds up to the ultimate scheme, which is unlocked after completing a number of grand schemes, three in the realms of chaos, and five in immortal empires. This will be a gigantic battle versus the Empire with a number of reinforcements on each side, depending on how many and which Grand Schemes have been completed. Alongside their rewards, completion of Grand Schemes will add assistance to your side and remove it from the enemies to make that final battle much easier, so completing as many as possible before attempting the final battle is advised. And in either campaign, completing this ultimate scheme will get you the campaign victory, so if you're looking to actually complete the campaign, this is what you want to aim for. And the final mechanic that the Changeling has access to is shapeshifting. This last mechanic is incredibly simple, but also incredibly cool. Simply put, the Changeling can shapeshift into the form of any legendary lord or hero he defeats in battle or is in an alliance with. As I mentioned earlier, you can also unlock various forms via schemes. Once unlocked, you click below his portrait and choose from your selection who you would like to play as in battle. And don't worry if you want to play as the Changeling himself, this is an activatable ability in battle and you can go back and forth at will, but each transformation has a 2 minute cooldown. And that's really all there is to it, he quite literally becomes them, stats, abilities and all. The only things that don't carry over are any mounts. Spells and abilities can be used but you'll need to go into his yellow tree pretty deep to unlock them. In fact his entire yellow tree is all about making his transformation ability better, whether that's reducing the cooldown of transformations or buffing the stats of his alternate form, so it's well worth going into as part of his skill tree for fun if for nothing else. Just take out legendary lords, or be best buddies first. And lastly, this is technically a mechanic, uh, he has no trespassing penalties, so feel free to go wherever you want without worrying about annoying potential friends, because I'm sure you did that so much normally. As I mentioned at the start, he can also make use of the changing of the ways and collect grimoires over the course of the campaign, and it's similar to normal, with a few added ways to earn them through cults, so nothing too crazy there. But one thing the changeling is missing is the winds of magic manipulation, so you are left a little bit more up to chance, rather than deciding exactly where they wax and wane over time. Alongside the Changeling, the Blue Scribe has also been added to almost the entire Chaos roster alongside Siege. Upon reaching level 12 with any Siege or Undivided Lord, aka any of these guys, you'll unlock a quest chain which when completed will spawn the Blue Scribes for use in campaign. I'll go over their battle stats in my battle video, but no, they are exceptionally talented casters with a really unique playstyle. On the campaign map they have a mixed set of actions, but of course they belong in armies where they'll not only bring their magical power, but also extra reserves every single turn. In their skill tree you have a massive amount of magical skills, adding entire laws to their rotating library of sorcery, as well as the elusive cataclysm spells once sought to exist only in the chaos realms. As well as this they have massive buffs for horror units, movement range and of course the odd combat buff here and there. Overall an excellent magical hero, fitting for any army you can get them in. As well as the Scribes, the new free LC hero Echold Brass is accessible to all the same factions as the Scribes, and just the same once you get to level 12, you'll have to complete a quest chain. At the end of this chain, you'll need to fight a decently tough battle versus some beastmen, and upon your victory, he'll join your faction. He's a little more basic than the Blue Scribes, but is still an outstanding hero that wants to be in an army. His combat stats are comparable to most lords, with massive weapon damage, armor, and melee stats. As well as this, he comes with several powerful abilities to assist himself and his army, which I'll cover in more detail in the battle video. His skill tree is fairly standard for the most part, with combat buffs for himself, but he also has a number of unique skills for making friends with other chaotic factions, buffs when fighting the Empire, upgraded abilities, and unit buffs. He's a great lead from the front hero, and particularly when playing Siege, that's never a bad thing to have alongside a support focused Lord. As for expansion in his campaigns, honestly the best part about this faction is the options you have. Since the schemes span the map in all the different theatres, there's not really a bad direction to go in. Of course, starting in the Empire in both campaigns, you're incentivized to start that theatre first or one of the others nearby, but there's nothing stopping you from heading wherever you want to go and scheming to your heart's content wherever you find yourself. For efficiency's sake, my advice would be to complete either the Empire or another theatre nearby and use the Rift research to open a rift in the new theatre wherever you want to go. And then you just keep on repeating this until they're all done, and you should have a grand old time as long as you make as many cults as possible. It doesn't matter who owns the settlement, make a cult to push your campaign that much further ahead. This advice really goes for both campaigns as well. As long as you're working towards some sort of scheme and have plenty of cults on the go, you can't really go wrong. As I said, you kind of have to try to get these caught and have them destroyed, so all that'll happen is you'll just keep getting more, more income, more corruption, more supplies, grimoires, whatever you need, cults will provide. And one last thing to mention about the Changeling's faction is the research tree. It's totally different in layout to Kairos' tree, though a lot of the same texts show up, and in my opinion, it's a much better layout. Aside from the central basic text, you have six areas which neatly contain text for each area of the campaign. Left to right, Army Boons is just that buffs for your army on the campaign map, so casualty replenishment, hero recruitment enhancements, and even the ability to make the teleport movement stance cost zero wins of magic, which is pretty cool. 
Changing of the ways contains just that, all the text will unlock the different changing of the ways, so you can do all the classic siege tomfoolery on top of all your cultist mischief. Tricks to cultists and rifts for that matter are the mechanics I mentioned earlier. From the research menu, you can simply select where you want to spawn each of them and you're off to the races. Winds of Magic has a couple of general magic related buffs and some army abilities, but the rest of the trees unlock in spells for the Lord of Change units in battle, so once you unlock them, it's worth going into here. Lastly, unit boons is of course buffs for all units in the faction, so if you want better armies, spend some time here. I would advise you to first go into army boons and grab anything to do with replenishment since it's never not useful. Once you have some more grimoires on board, I'd focus on the winds of magic buffs and abilities before grabbing any changing of the ways that you want. If you ask me, the changing of the ways isn't quite as strong or necessary here, but some useful ones are open the gates, halt army and force peace. Spend tricks to rewards basically any time you get them to spread throughout the map and teleport around it with ease, and pick up army buffs as you grab more and more powerful units to send them to the moon. That's all there is to the Changeling in campaign, but the battle video shouldn't be far behind if you want to know more about how to use him and his new units in battle. What are you thinking of the Changeling so far? Leave it down in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and if you want to know how to play the other Siege Lord in the game, then why not check out this video, my campaign guide of Siege, aka Kairos, when they first came out.